I think Trump is is just really. Uh, so I've known him a long time. I I was um, involved in the like you mentioned the Franklin case uh, tangentially. Um, the Paul Rodriguez who broke the Franklin story in '89 worked for the Washington Times, and uh, I tried to get a story to him in 2002. I passed him some information in 2003, uh, but he never wrote the story. Um, and then he died uh, of cancer at a young age. I think he was a great journalist, and um, sometimes, you know, there's a lot of bloody footprints in this business. But Trump uh, was one of the Epstein uh, brownstone operations in 1993. He was two incidents. One was kind of a lead up incident, and then the other one was, but it was, he didn't know how he hold, you know, I mean, I'm just going to say this, this is just true. Um, he didn't know how old the girls were, uh, the girl. He didn't know how old the girl was at the time. So this is the kind of the, the dirt that they have on Trump, that Epstein has on Trump. And okay. I think Trump is best off saying, look, you know, it was 1993 that that happened. And I didn't know, and Jeff, you are the one who had a CIA operation, or you had a DynCorp operation with 12 cameras. You're the one who put that girl in the room and brought her in from Kosovo or Bosnia or wherever you brought her in from. I think there's more than enough blame to go around here. And I'm not going to have my presidency compromised by that by those two incidents. So I roomed with, I was in New York in 2002 and 2003. I roomed with a, 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 a gal who worked the Trump parties, the Epstein Trump parties. She was a caterer. Cater. She was a model and editing other times, but she did that. They did Long Island parties and they did these parties on the Upper West Side where Jet Epstein's uh, stone fortress is up there. And it was kind of a, the parties had a beginning and a middle, and, and the parties would come in. And there was it was kind of handshakes and Bloomberg and Trump and everybody. In the middle, it's kind of a lull uh, where all the waitresses disappeared and waiters disappeared. And then they come out in their new costumes and then everyone go, oops, this is getting crazy. I'm leaving. Uh, and then there would be the kind of like entendres that would occur after that, where there was these rooms that were set up and they were being filmed. Well, Trump always came in for like five minutes. Some model had his picture taken, took a couple, shook a couple hands and he would leave. He didn't, he, he wasn't the, oh my God, I have to stay here and lurk and, you know, troll for, some kind of, he was always with some beautiful model. Um, and this, he probably went to, I'm gonna guess 30 uh, Jeff Epstein parties. So he's, he's involved, but very tangentially. My advice to, to, to Trump is to just say, okay, spill it. It's kind of like the Billy Bush tape, you know? Once it's out there and it's processed, everybody, okay, that's that was then, this is now. And now we want you to run the country now. We don't care what happened in 1993. I think Trump's still a little bit afraid that that will come out and compromise his presidency. Did you follow the Judge Scalia story? Because that really reeks. And I've gotten some back yeah. uh, back channel stuff about that. There are, there are these groups of kind of religious sect people um, that are willing to do basically whatever you know they're ordered to do and it's God's will or God's wishes. And, you know, it's the pillow on the face thing. We find a lot of this in, in hospitals where everything's going along great with the patient and then all of a sudden at between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., the person dies. And it's, all, you know, usually natural causes, whatever. But there's what I call the disorderly orderly. It's the guy with the long beard. He's got the all the tats, he looks like he came out of the Bureau of Prisons uh, and he's in a motorcycle gang. That's the guy who's from, is really from the Bureau of Prisons, from the <laughs> Dynecorp. Dynecorp manages the Bureau of Prisons. Oh God. And they they release a lot of these people into the, into the mix to do this kind of heavenly intervention on. So anyway, I, I believe that Scalia was just a pillow on that face. So being a targeted individual, uh, w this again goes back to uh, the overseas program. So if you read Peter Skate, uh, uh, Skayhill, 
uh, from the intercept or from the drone papers, sure. you'll you'll see this thing called the disposition matrix. And because this kind of goes back to your main core thing, because we have these computers and this servers and server farms, we can have a file for every person, man, woman, and child in every country in the world. This is kind of like uh, Collect It All from the from the Snowden movie, Collect It All. Sure. And, you know, he is, Snowden's in the movie and he goes, well, who are you targeting? Uh, you know, he's thinking about terrorists and he's sitting there with the NSA guy and the guy goes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's that was the Snowden movie and it's true. Uh, so the disposition matrix is we have the methodology of determining who's a winner and who's a loser. And depending on who's in power, that list changes a little bit. But once you're on one list, it's hard to get off. Like if, once you're on the terrorism watch list, and, you, know, you were a Ron Paul supporter and you put that bumper sticker on your car and you were in the wrong <laughs> state like Missouri. Or you, and, or you watch, like, you know, you watch my channel. <laughs> yeah, you're, all your viewers, <laughs> they're, they're, they're done. They're, they're, they're out of the IP address. <laughs> So, so that is the kind of the top of the funnel, okay? And there are different uh, methodologies at every point along the way to move you down the funnel out the other end. And the other end of the funnel isn't a fun end. It's, it's like being sleeping on a park bench, penniless, and about ready to, you know, expire. And the, the, these groups that I'm talking about, like the New uh, Life Refuge uh, group in Idaho and all these other cults, uh, what I was going to say before is cults are really basically a uh, an amalgamation of sex trafficking with the women, child trafficking with the kids, um, with the with the men, you have the enforcement networks of drug networks and so forth. So it's kind of like a little crime Cosa Nostra in the a little microcosm in the cult. And the same way for these kind of branch extreme religious organizations. Okay. So the CIA through the FBI counterterrorism division has, there's thousands of these that they've contracted with and it's like franchises. The only way I could describe it is like, McDonald's. and they're, they're out there. And what you want uh, to do is, if for your targets, okay, uh, this goes back to warfare. Uh, you want to maintain an equilibrium during the day. Uh, you don't want to lose anybody during the day. You just want to maintain your perimeter. And at night is when you want to do your insurgency, with your psychological operations and so forth. And that's exactly how the um, program for um, diffuse and disrupt works in the United States with the FBI's counterterrorism is they, you have a box, you have a surveillance box around you as you move around. And I can explain that more in detail later. So predictive analytics is just that. It's like you usually go to the, see the same friend at the same time of day. So I don't need to have a huge amount of informants all over the city. I just need to have them move around according to, let's say I have a thousand targets in a city or a hundred, let's say I have a hundred targets and I have a thousand, uh, I have a thousand informant operatives. I can move those people around in a judicious way, uh, and cover everybody, but it makes the target think that there's a thousand people following me everywhere. You know, I'm constantly being harassed. So it has this kind of, over, the whole idea is to overwhelm you psychologically, but there are all, all these people against you. But in, in, in reality, it's just this judicious use of these different teams in a clever way. They're trying to cut in front of you all the time. They're always trying to cut in front of you and cut you off on the freeway and cut you off, you know, wherever you are. And so you, you, it's this, you know, uh, J. Edgar Hoover used to say, I want the target to think that there's a G-man behind every mailbox. <laughs> and and, and yeah. it's just this, this over psychological, the psychological operation to overwhelm you. That's, that's being a TI.
Well, I think Pizzagate is a part, and I think there's some other guy, uh, some CIA guy that said the same thing. Pizzagate is just the kind of the tip of the iceberg of a much larger uh, human exploitation. Um, I think, you know, I, I talk about this, that what you have coming into New York and, and Washington through this kind of, like you were saying, the financial network and the government network, World Bank is in Washington, D.C. Council on Foreign Relations is in New York. So those are going to be your nexus points for all this stuff. And, you know, just like any other uh, invention, when these guys come in from the Middle East, you know, they're going to want, you know, their entertainment, you know, afterward. And um, they're going to want to, uh, you know, partake in, women and what also uh, diplomats or different people are putting in front of them is saying, hey, you know, you're you're a Muslim guy, you can marry a six year old, you can marry a seven year old, you can marry an eight year old. So there's a showcasing that happens. So I think Comet Pizza you're gonna find is gonna be kind of a showcase for young children that couldn't be uh, moved. This is the Ted Gunderson thing. Ted, Ted kind of got off on the Illuminati and he kind of got disinfoed and he kind of got a little bit taken off track. But he was pretty right on the the trafficking piece, which is uh, there's got to be some place in Washington, D.C. where we show you the kids. There's got to be a showroom at some at, at somewhere. And, you know, Comet Pizza is going to be, I think, one of those places. But it's it's more than that. It's It's oil, it's arms, it's uh, organ harvesting, it's, and then the child trafficking is a piece of it.